one point where the earthquake happened in Washington, D.C. I remember uh, Dr. Benefield, when he's here, he, we prayed and for the city of Madison and for the government. They're praying for the elected officials in all their cities. Uh, Tina and I are part of that network now, so we have we have actually the third uh, third Monday night we pray we pray online on a phone call. So we'll give you that information. You pray with us. We're praying for the city, praying for the government officials, praying for the educators, uh, our school boards, and things like that to to have a revelation of who Jesus is, and because that's the only hope they have in this world, right? Is to know who Jesus is. Now I was um, I don't want you to leave here scared today, like oh my God, right? As a Christian, we have hope that we're going to be with our Savior. We're his, we are the bride. We are the ones that He came for, died, and those that believe have hope. Amen. And so, I just want to bring out to you uh, today a little bit uh, in Scripture again, as Jesus spoke about this. And I probably will close because I don't want to be really long. I have so much information. I'll probably give some more next week. And then I think soon after that, we're going to be teaching. Uh, the different feasts of Israel. I've been thinking about doing this for a couple of years. We talked about it. Me and Richard talked about it once or twice already, Tina and I. But then we're just going to teach them. So you can kind of know what the sequence is. And what does that mean for us today as believers? You know, uh, when did Jesus, when was Jesus really born? If we know it's, we all know it's not December 25th. I mean, we know that. So we know that it's probably more like the Feast of Tabernacles when he was born. And that's in the late, late fall. Amen? And then, what is the Feast of Trumpets? What's the significance of that? What's Passover about? Most of us know Passover. You know, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they were passed over, amen? And there's some significant things as, as, as believers, what that means. And so there's seven different major feasts that we'll probably just go over, maybe one a week for the next few weeks. Um, I want you to understand the Gospels. When we were doing the journey class, most of you went through that. We know we, the part of the requirement was to read through the Gospels, right? And what we did is we read through the Gospels about four different times through those books. And what, the reason for that is so we're familiar with what the Gospel is, what, this, what Jesus' words were. And, you know, lay hands on the sick. You know, if Jesus did spit in somebody's eye, they get their eye and was healed. You know, I mean, if, that, if you do that, great. Praise God. But it, it's good to know His words and understand them. Because some of them seem to be a mystery. But then he said, I'm going to send you the Spirit so you don't have, you'll have understanding. And we know now that the Holy Spirit was sent to us, as I said earlier. The Holy Spirit was there to give us revelation of the Word, to, to, to be a teacher, apparently, one to come alongside of us, help us in, in our journey uh, until whatever happens. If we pass from this life and the next and the natural death, then, then we'll be waiting for Jesus on the other side. Or uh, for us that remain, maybe, uh, as Jesus told us, well, this, disciple, this, this generation won't end. So what does that mean? This generation, this uh, era, what does that really mean? We have to know what that means. I, I listened to a scholar say, well, that means that generation. And so when Peter and, and John and those guys passed away, then Jesus came back. I, well, if he did, then we're living with Jesus now. This doesn't make sense. In his, in his thinking, and this is the new heaven and new earth. This is the great, this, there's no more. And I think there's much, much more God has for us. Amen? There's much more. So let's look at this as signs at the end of the age, his words. And I'm going to end with the story with the intent versions. And I think I'm going to shortcut this a little bit because of time. But um, in, all these, in all these sayings, this is Jesus' words because my Bible is read. So we know those, right? And he's saying some certain things about the end of time because the, the guys, the disciples asked him. So let's go look at verse 4. It says, Jesus said, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and I will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of war, but see to it that you do not be alarmed. Now, I don't know about you, but just in the last weekend, we've had some major conflicts across the country, world, right? I mean, just happening. It's, it's always happened in the world, but it seems like it's been intensified. And I guess some people could have said that during World War II, or they could have said that during uh, Vietnam conflict, or during some of the, the Balkan things, or that kind of stuff. There's wars and people fighting against, against each other. But it doesn't line up what's happening in the solar, in the, in this, in the signs, right? It's not that the solar eclipse are happening at a certain time, and, and you know, these two years coming up is just different. So this seems like it's, it's a little more significant. Then there will be famine and earthquakes in various places. All these are a beginning of birth pains. 
Right, this is the beginning of birth. These are signs for us. Like a woman goes, I mean, Tina had five babies, my daughters had two, uh, Amy and, and Cherry, and we were fortunate enough to be around for those births. So, you know, I kind of know what uh, a woman goes through. I don't, I don't experience, obviously, I just, I can see it. I see the signs. Amen? And Tina was not, she's one of those ladies that she never says anything until the last minute. So she's got comfortable. She's sitting in the chair funny. She's groaning a little bit, you know. I said, baby, is it time to go? Yet? No, no, it's not time to go yet. But I know it's a sign. She's getting close to having the baby. And then, you know, I remember when Andy was born, I was on recruiting duty in Madison. Drove all the way up to South Prairie. Drove all the way to St. Mary's Hospital. We had the baby within an hour we got, when we got it. That was really close. But, uh... You know, I, I was able to experience that. So this, at the end of times, we, is, we can see, as a believer, we have something's going on, right? You can see this. We know spring's coming because uh, we got warm for three days in Wisconsin. So now we know it's coming. We know what the signs are. This is verse 9. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. Well, who wants to hear that? It's happening right now. Listen, it's happening right now. That you, that all over Egypt, all over uh, Africa, there's just places where Christians and pastors and teachers are being persecuted, raped, and killed because of this right here. This is the only reason. Pastor Sneed in, in Iran got, got arrested. He's a, he's a U.S. citizen. We're, our country has done nothing. He's in prison, almost to death. They bring him back to life. They, they, they revive him. They, they, they persecute him. It's, it's a horrible thing that he's going through. For one reason only, it's because he's a Christian. No other reason. He helps people, he, he gives them food, he gives clothes, he does all these wonderful things in that country uh, that's helped help uh, uh, spread the gospel. He's doing nothing wrong besides one thing, he's a Christian. Why were the Jewish people persecuted? Why, were the, why, why did the Holocaust happen? Because they're, they're God's chosen people. No other reason. Why do people hate Jews? Because they're God. They, people hate God. And it's happening right now. Can it happen to you? Yes. I remember the pastor from Mississippi. His wife came up for, uh, for, uh, for surgery. Remember, she, they stayed at our, our, our daughter's house. And she lost her job because she would not take down her Christian. Now, she worked there for 15 years. She had all these nice little Christian sayings that her kids gave her and she had around her workstation. Then a new boss came in. This reminds me of Egypt when the new Pharaoh came in and kicked, started persecuting the, the, uh, the Jewish people. And that's what happened to her. She, had, she decided she had to just leave that job. She lost her job because she was a Christian. No other reason. Not because of her work ethics, not because of who she is, just because she's a Christian. So these things are happening. Then you will be handed over for persecution, and even some of you put to death, and you will be ha uh, hated by all the nations because of who? Jesus. Right? At that time, many will turn away from the faith, and they will be betrayed and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people because of the increase of wickedness in uh, increase of wickedness. The love of most will grow cold, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. I want to stop right there. Listen, the, 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 the gospel is being preached throughout the nation. I got the gospel right here. I mean, it's in every language you can think of, you got it right here in your iPhone, right? People are getting the word of God. There's got to be no clear. How many, I mean, years ago you used to go, well, how can that happen? And we had to print a lot of Bibles and ship them out all over the world. We had to translate into all these different languages. When one guy can sit at a computer now and translate it to another language, the whole gospel, and then instantly print it, put it on the internet, it's amazing, amen? So we're going to be without excuse. Amen. The thing we have to do now, saints, is listen, we need to be ready. And I, I know I say this every week, but we should be ready every week. I mean, it's not like we're getting ready because now we have these signs in the heavens. This should bring joy to us, not fear, if you're a true believer. Amen? This is exciting for me, because I know that, I knew when I was a young believer, when somebody taught me that the temple has to be built for the Jewish people to believe that in Jesus fully. Amen? And I understood that. I understand all of it, but I understood that that had to happen. And ever since then, I've been waiting, and I hear things about happening in Jerusalem. Like, more and more people over the last 20, 30 years have been moving back to Jerusalem. All the Jewish people from all over the world, amen, and moving back to that place, their homeland. 
and they're still fighting. And of course, our presidents try to get in there and have peace accords and all this stuff, and everything's failed. Why? Because every every time they come through and make a, uh, try to make a peace agreement, they want Israel to give up some of their land. They want Israel to give up the temple area. They want Israel to give up this and give up that. And it's not going to happen because from that from the uh, what is it the Mediterranean right there all the way down to the Euphrates is all God's land. And look at the Word of God. So they're going to get even more land than they have now because that's their land. It's always been their land. God told them when they came in, when they came over the mountain and they came in and they said, this is Canaan, their Moses couldn't go in because he had disobeyed, right? But he could see it. And you get into, go into your Bible uh, program to look at that vision from on top of uh, that mountain where Moses had a look. And it's amazing. It just, it's, that looks like a big desert, but it's a big open. I just look at it as I was pondering that picture, thinking what well, Moses was thought, because he almost made it there. He was disobedient. I don't want you to almost make it. But that land, all the way from them on, all the way to the sea, is Israel's. It's always going to be. It always was. So if there's a big battle coming, and if Iran and Syria and Turkey and all those people gather up against Israel, guess who's going to win? Israel's going to win. They have all the greatest Russian equipment, and they have all the greatest American equipment, but who really cares? Because God's on their side. And God's on your side. Amen? Amen. And we don't have to fear we have to know that this is all a sign for things that have to happen. This has to happen. My heart is that we have an urgency to be able to share our faith with those around us because we have the good news. My urgency in my spirit is that if I share this with you, that we understand that we need to be ready and not worry. Make sure your oil is full. Make sure your, your, your vessel is trimmed, ready, and lit. And when the bridegroom comes, you don't have to worry about, hey, am I right or wrong? Be right. Be, a, be in the light. Don't let your circumstances overtake you. Allow, stand firm as the Word of God says. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I was, go ahead, I, you go, ahead, go home this afternoon, you know, read chapter 24 and 25 in, in Matthew. Um, I guess I just need to make a handout for this next week. It says in verse 20, in chapter 24, verse 32, he says, now, now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, the government, the, this generation will uh, certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Then he goes on to talk about the hour. Who knows when this hour is going to happen when Jesus comes back? Does anybody know? Who, who knows this time? Does Jesus know this time? Does the Spirit know this time? No, the Father knows the time. So I don't know. I know we can change the Father's mind. You know, Moses did many times. Don't destroy those people. They're your people. And God said, okay, you're right. Let's go ahead and give the commandments. And give to all those rules of Leviticus I've been reading. Crazy stuff. Crazy stuff God made them do. Because they were of their disobedience, I believe. But all he's saying to us is believe. Believe in him. When things get rough, believe in him. When you're not sure about stuff, believe in him. You should default to believing in him. Yes. And your faith will grow in you. And the Spirit of God will guide you. And you'll be alright. Amen? It's not it's when we trust in ourselves and our own knowledge and our own abilities when we get off track. But we believe in Him. I tell you what, it's hard. I know it's hard. Believe in Him. Believe in Him. He, he'll do it for you. We're not sure. Uncertain. Relationships. Whatever it is, believe in Him. And He'll guide you and He'll strengthen you. I want to close with this because I just want to go over the story of the ten virgins. I want you just to go look for it and uh, turn to your Bibles in verse, uh, chapter 25. And I, I've I've spoken on this, I've preached on this, I've taught on this, I, you know, and I've heard sermons on this so many times, you know. I'm thinking, well, this, these virgins are all represent what? The, the believers, right? They're all believers. They're all God's chosen. But then some were ready and some weren't ready. Well, I don't know why those girls, if you will, those virgins, why some weren't ready. 
Why didn't they do what they're supposed to do? Did they get did they get um, complacent? Did they you know it just got routine for them? It became church. It didn't become relationship. They didn't know the Jesus. They didn't anticipate his coming. They weren't ready for him. They didn't they were they didn't get there. I mean, I did a couple weddings too, so I know my girls got married. You know, I mean, they, it's hours. It's days. Uh, ahead of time, you know, getting the hair done, making sure the makeup's right, make sure the dress is just perfect, amen? You know, make sure the, the doilies on the table was a big thing about that one time. Make sure the containers all look nice. The windows have to be decorated. Everything is in order. Because on that moment, she walks out of the aisle, it's all, it's done. It's, it's too late. You can't go back and fix it. That's it. We're starting the ceremony, right? It, 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 no matter what it looks like or what's not there, it, it's, it's too late. You know, I'm kind of that guy, okay, if it didn't get right, that's fine, it's okay, you know, I just have that kind of attitude sometimes, but you know, for the woman, for the for the bride, it has to be done right, that's her special day, and these, these ladies, these virgins, if you were, they're getting things ready, they were getting themselves ready, because the bridegroom is coming, and if you learn, if you can take time to learn about the uh, uh, Jewish wedding, you'll see that uh, certain things happen a certain way, and the bridegroom would come at night, and get the bride, it's just an amazing story. But let's look at this. At that time, which is the time when the kingdom of God is going to come. It says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like. This is what it'll be like. This is what's going to happen. Some people are going to show up on church Sunday morning, and we're not going to be here, right? It's going to be like this. Some people are going to be there. Some people are going to be left behind because they're not ready. They're, they're halfway. They're like one foot in God, if you will, in Revelation, and one part in the world. And you can't do that. You have to be fully in this thing. Fully committed. It says, uh, uh, it was like ten virgins um, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. And this is a story, Jesus tells a story. This parable, if you will. The foolish ones took the lamps but did not take any extra oil with them. The wise took uh, oil in their jars all along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long ways in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Come on, how many know sometimes doing this Christian thing is a, it's a long journey. It's not, a, it's not a sprint. It's a long journey, Paul says. Run as to get the prize. Just keep running. Do what you have to do. Amen. Keep it up. Keep standing firm on what you believe in. This is what Jesus is saying here. Because it takes, he's coming. He's coming. All right? Be ready. He's coming at any moment. All right? And it says here, Then the bridegroom was a long way, uh, time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Verse 6. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom. Come and meet him. Maybe that's the moment we hear the trumpets, like he said, the feast of trumpets. They threw 33 times. And they do it three times, and the last loud voice, or trumpet, they do that in Jerusalem, on that feast. Long, long, long trumpet sound. Then the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. And this is sad to me, because I think some people are going to be left behind because they're not, they don't have their oil. Well, pastor, you didn't give me enough. You didn't feed me enough. You know, you weren't, I, I need more. Well, get your own oil. Get some oil. Get it. It's the Holy Spirit. He's going to give you all you need. You don't have to go beg for the oil. The oil is for you. It's free. You just have to get it. Amen. I can't give it to you. I can encourage you, but I can't give you the oil. As much as I want to, I can't. We have to get the oil for ourselves. And once you get that oil, get enough. Get some extra. It's like, if you understand the scripture, this is it's limitless an amount of oil that you can receive. The Spirit of God wants to give it to you. God wants you to freely have it. Jesus is praying for you, interceding, making the connection with you and Father God so you can have that oil. Amen? Don't look too guilty at me, alright? Please, just understand this is good news. This is news that will help us make it to the end. Amen? Amen. We have to make Amen. it to the end. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Verse 9. No, they replied, there's many, uh, there's many, not, 
there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some oil for yourself. And I, I wonder, you can't buy this oil. You can't buy it. It's free. Amen? But while they were there on their way uh, to buy oil, the bridegroom, uh, bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Once the door was shut, that's it. You can't. You got to wait. You got to go through all what's going to happen next. You got to go through the rest of the seals. You got to go through all the tribulation, all the hardship that's going to happen in this world. You're going to see it all. All those destructions that might happen. Now, I know some people believe in uh, that maybe we'll be here part of the first tribulation period. We won't be here part of the second tribulation. Uh, some believe that we're going to be through the whole tribulation and leave after that. You know, there's a difference of opinion. I think we're going to be, I think we're going to leave before. You know, I think, that, you know, I'm going to have my oil ready. Yes. And I want to be ready. I want to have, I'm going to be full up. When I, I'm at, my wig is going to be burning. I'm going to clean that, I'm going to take the globe off of my life and I'm going to see how stained up it is because I haven't trimmed my wick properly. I'm going to clean it with the blood of Jesus so all my sins are forgiven. And I'm going to put that back on and it's going to grow, grow brighter for Jesus, amen? I want to be that way. I need the oil. You need the oil. Then they're going to come to the door shut, and later the others will came and say, Sir, sir, let us in. Open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour that he will return. You know, it's like the sheep and the goats. The sheep, the, the sheep are on this side, on the right side of the, of the judgment seat of Christ. And, and I knew you come and enter your rest. And then you are all their goats. And the goats are saying, well, Jesus, we, we gave you an offering. We, we helped the poor. We did this and we did that. And, and he's going to say, I never knew you. Because we didn't have oil. We're just doing it out of our own ability. We didn't have the Holy Spirit. Amen. We didn't have the Holy Spirit in us. And all that, what does that mean? What does that, let's, let me simplify it. What that means is you believe. Because when you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and died for you, the moment you believe that and you continue to believe that, the Spirit of God is in you, is deposited in you as an inheritance. And it said in Job and Acts, let's turn to Acts chapter 2, that he poured out a spirit, right? Well, I don't want to prophesy. Well, you got to prophesy. How are you going to get filled with more oil? How's it going to get in you if you don't prophesy? Give away what God's given you. Let's turn to there. Acts chapter 2. And we'll end with this. Well, I, no, we'll end in Jude, actually. But at, Acts chapter 2. How many times did I say we'll end with this? Three times already, right? right? And I, I'm getting, I thought I was doing better on that, but apparently not. Let me read this again as we read it in the beginning. Then Peter stood up, up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain to you. Listen carefully to what I said. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It is only the ninth hour in the morning. No, it is what was spoken by the prophet Joel in this verse 17. In that, in the last days, God will pour out spirit on all people. What does all people mean? All people. Jew, Jewish people and Gentiles, if you will, according to the Word of God. All people. And then he goes on to even more, describe it more. Your sons and daughters also, they, they're going to prophesy. And, and, and listen, not only your sons and your daughters, uh, but all your servants are going to prophesy also. Amen? So who's going to prophesy? The little kids will prophesy. And the teenagers will prophesy. And the adults will prophesy. Amen? Everyone. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no class warfare in God. Everybody's equal. You get to have the Holy Spirit, all of you, everyone. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. Hallelujah. And then you go on to, to, to read it. It says, I will show wonders in heaven and signs above. You know what? We just kind of explained that a little bit. And the sun will turn to, to, to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls... Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. You gotta call on him before he comes. You gotta call on him before this all happens, amen. And I think we're mandated to go make disciples, right? We 
can't do that unless we are filled with this, with this Spirit thing, with this Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God fall fresh on us again. Spirit of the living God, fall on you and me today in such a mighty way that we understand the revelation of what God's about to do. Holy Spirit, come and touch our lives, change us, reveal to us sin and, and, and disbelief and unbelief, God. That we walk in the power of your glory. Hallelujah. That our wits will be burning bright with you. I'm going to share with you a verse that I go to often that sometimes I just need uh, I just need something to help me, you know? And I know it's the Spirit of God. I need more of Him in me so I can give it out to my wife and my kids and my family and to you. And I can't do this on my own. And this is, you know what's kind of interesting? I'm always going back to my my. Pentecostal roots, if you will, you know, grew up in a, in a, I got kicked out of a Baptist church, praise the Lord for Baptists, right, and then I went to a, a Pentecostal something God church, and man, I see people worshiping God, I've never seen people worship God like that before, they were like happy to be in church, I mean, they were smiling and stuff, it was, I mean, and then afterwards, it was like, the church just, they never ended, it was just right in the, in the hallway, and hallway, the foyer, and then out in the parking lot, we never left, we just hung out, it was just amazing, it was like, this is great, because in the Baptist church, you know, the church was over, and in the car, we were gone to the restaurant, like, instantly, it was like, everybody knew where they had to be, it was more important than what the pastor had to say, but in the Assembly of God church, where the Spirit was, worship just went on. Sermons were longer. Nobody cared. What was different? It was the Spirit of God. I wanted to be in His presence. I want, I, I'm praying that over us so much that when I, I went to that meeting on Friday night, I went to, uh, uh, they, like we're doing on March 15th. You guys got to be here on March 15th for our prayer meeting. Uh, God told us to do it. We're doing it. And so every other month we're doing a monthly prayer meeting. We have about six different ministries coming, and we're going to worship God together, and we're going to we're gonna pray for our city, we're going to pray for the lost, we're going to pray for the Korean community, the, the Chinese community, we're going to have to, uh, Leo is going to pray, pray during that time, we have Leo coming and praying for, uh, uh, for the Chinese community, and uh, I believe God's, I'm finding out God's doing that all over the city of Madison, and I'm, I'm so happy because the city needs Jesus. Another pastor, they just quote us uh, John 21 uh, Facebook, right? Now we got Facebook. John 21 17, you know, the unity of the body of Christ, so Jesus be glorified. That verse, is, that's the verse God gave me and uh, two other pastors. And so I know it's going to happen all over the city. We're going we're gonna to come together and we're going to see God move in the city in a mighty way. And I'm just praying, hopefully, it'll be before the end of the year that something significant can happen. You need to be there. You need to come on, on March 15th. There's no other thing that needs to happen on that night but be here in the presence of God. And let's pray together as a body of Christ. And, and bring friends, bring unbelievers, bring, bring people, amen? And I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But I know that I cannot do anything for the kingdom of God without His Holy Spirit. My lamp is always empty when I try to do this on my own. And I don't shine bright for Jesus. And my sin creeps up in me again. And when I try to do good, I don't do good. As, as Paul described, I fight that. We need the Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Now let, let's, let's look at this for a second. This is in Jude. Chap, chapter, there's only one chapter. So first chapter of Jude. It's a book, the little page right before the book of Revelation. Turn there in your Bibles. Underline this. Mark it in blood. Whatever you have to do. It says, But you, dear friends, build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray always in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Build yourself up. You have to build yourself up. We are vessels and we leak. Unfortunately. We just leak. And we get caught up in life and stuff. And then we pray, and then our faith, I don't know how you, it happens for you, but then sometimes I just, that disbelief comes in. You know, I can deal with this myself. 
you know, God, I know you're there, but, you know, I'm just, I'm doing this. And then you find out just a few days later that, man, if I just would have just prayed, humble myself enough to pray, then the Spirit of God would have strengthened me and I could have dealt with the situation. Amen? Come on. Remember, it says, um, if my people, right, what does it say? If my people, that's you and me, God's people and the Jewish people, if my people will humble, right, what does that mean, humble? Bow down lowly. If my people will humble myself, get down as low as you can get. And say, God, I'm nothing. I need you. There's nothing in me. I can't do this. He says, if we would humble ourselves and pray, it's, to pray is like saying, okay, I can't, God, you are a supreme being. I recognize you as a supreme being. I, I recognize you as the ultimate answer to everything that I am and do. But I can't do this on my own, God. And then he says something that's really significant next. He says, if I humble myself and pray, then he says what? I will hear your prayers, right? I will heal your land. Wow. If we that believe would just humble ourselves enough, God would hear us and answer our prayer. That's amazing to me. And in the New Testament, the New Covenant, he said, I don't even help you pray because I know you can't pray on your own. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to help you pray. Because sometimes you don't know what to pray. You need help praying. God knew that. So hey, I'm going to send you some help. And you're going to help, but you have to have an act of saying, no, God, I can't do it. I need you. I need you. I need your help. I need to bow down and, and humble myself before God and say, God, help me. And when you do, he's going to hear you. And he's going to answer your prayers. And he's going to heal what you need. Amen. And Jude said, and Jude, when he wrote this, he said, this will help build you up in the faith. This will help strengthen you. If we humble, that's cool, isn't it? As you go low, God will lift you up. But if you lift yourself up, you'll sometimes go the opposite direction, doesn't it? Hallelujah. Let's do this. Let's stand where you're at, or kneel down, or whatever you want to do. And let's take a minute, and you ask God, fill you with his spirit so you can, your light can rise sharp, uh, sharply for him. And while you're doing that, as you have your hands bowed, as you humble yourself before God, and as the Holy Spirit reveals anything to you at all, just anything, just confess it right where you're at. Just say, Lord, please forgive me. Hallelujah. Forgive me, Lord. For thinking of myself more highly than I ought to, Lord. Lord, forgive me for being boastful. Hallelujah. Spirit of God, fill your, fill your children. Fill those vessels up with your spirit, God. Hallelujah.
the first and the last, yes, the beginning God. and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, yes, and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, sexual morality, the murderers, and idolaters, and everyone who loves and practice falsehood. I, Jesus, has sent my angels to give you this testimony <laughs> for the churches. I am the root. I am the offspring of David. I am the bright morning star. The Spirit of the Lord and the bride says, Come. The Spirit of the Lord and the bride. You're the bride. Yes, say, Come, Jesus. And let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Father, we're just saying together, come with me, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us finish this race, God. Hallelujah. With endurance, with the power that comes from your Holy Spirit. Fill us, Lord. To overflowing and we have enough to give away Lord bless your children in Jesus wonderful and holy name and everyone said amen amen, amen.